Would you like to learn how a security architect differs from other cybersecurity roles? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs and I've been an enterprise architect now for approximately 25 years. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the security architect and the cloud security architect and how they're very unique positions that are very different than many other tech roles. Now, I have to tell you, I love the security architecture role. It's one of the highest paying tech jobs that are actually out there, but it's one of the most often misconfused. And because people are so confused about the role, they often have a big challenge becoming uh, security architects and cloud security architects because they don't understand the role. So we're gonna discuss the difference here between a security architect and other technology roles like security engineers, defensive security engineers, offensive security engineers, SOC analysts, and other people people in the cybersecurity realm. So security architecture is not a doing role. So we don't configure things. There's no engineering. There's no configuring of the identity and access management systems, firewalls, data loss prevention systems. The security architecture role is an advisory role. It is a consulting. It is a strategy. It is a planning role. So the architect doesn't configure technology they design a strategy. So let's talk about uh, what goes into the role, the main elements of what we actually do, design and planning. So as a security architect, we do a lot of designing se comprehensive security strategies and architectures for our organization. We'll create security policies, uh, security standards, security procedures. We'll be creating incident response procedures, for example, and we'll be uh, planning the long-term security vision for that organization and finding a way to align that organization's security vision along with the business's goals. As security architects, we are active in risk management. We are analyzing and planning our risk assessments, we are looking at the outcomes of various vulnerability analysis and various threat information to determine its impact on our organization to determine how we might be able to mitigate some of these risks. We will be identifying, prioritizing, and quantifying security risks, and we'll be developing all kinds of risk mitigation strategies, whether it be deterrence, whether it be blocking certain things, technical controls, physical controls. So a lot of that is going to go into that risk management. Now, as an architect, I'd say the majority of our job is really collaboration and leadership. So the architect itself, we don't actually build anything or touch anything, but we have to work with IT teams, whether they be software developers, cloud engineers, network engineers, any kind of engineer and architect along the way, because every element of the system can either contribute to the security of the system or be a weakness in the system. So we have to understand the entire environment and therefore we're doing a lot of work with IT teams and collaboration. No, we will have to collaborate with uh, security with others across the entire organization. And whether security involves uh, application security, things like uh, code checks when it's the software is being created and vulnerability analysis of the code itself and, and uh, security things like input validation procedures from an application security. Or whether we're looking at network security like a firewall or an IDS IPS system. Or whether we're looking at data security such as encryption and data loss prevention strategies. Or identity and access management. Security touches every element of the, of the organization. So we'll be doing a lot of collaboration with various teams on that. Now, it doesn't matter how great our security is. If someone inside the organization falls victim to a social engineering or a phishing campaign or something to that effect. So we'll be doing a lot of leading and creation of security awareness training programs. And we may lead some security educational campaigns, uh, new password for the month, or everybody uses this new two-factor authentication, or have you checked your cybersecurity thing? So whatever the point is, we're going to do a lot of that collaboration and leadership. Now, we'll also be dealing with a lot of monitoring response, but not from the perspective of the engineer. We might be designing uh, systems that will monitor our architectures. So like, for example, uh, planning very, where seam systems might be to aggregate logs of various parts of our component. We will be creating of incident response procedures. We'll be creating and testing business continuity plans, disaster recovery plans, incident response plans. And then we do a lot of governance and compliance work. 
So we'll make sure that our architectures ensure compliance with industry regulations and standards, and we may have to collaborate with attorneys on these things. We'll be developing security compliance processes for external services or participating in risk management frameworks. And uh, a lot really is going to go into our job with that. Now, when it comes to security or any architecture job, there's going to be a lot of research and innovation that we have to do. So we'll be spending a lot of our days uh, researching various te tools, technologies that can be coming out. We'll be uh, researching new threats and new threat factors and that can be affecting us. We'll be evaluating and recommending uh, new security type solutions uh, that we could potentially consider as part of our organization. So a lot of research and innovation, I and mean, there's gonna be a lot of stakeholder and vendor management in our job as well. So we're gonna to have to get key information from key stakeholders, learn how their business works. We don't wanna break anything along the way. We're gonna to have to get stakeholder buy-in and to help with changing the culture as we bring in new security architectures. There's gonna be a lot of management of security vendors. Now, there's going to be a lot of meetings in any architecture role. So we'll be meeting uh, meetings. There'll be documents. There'll be procedure presentations that'll happen. We'll be leading meetings. We'll be leading responses to RFIs, RFPs, and RFQs potentially in meetings. We'll be delivering presentations to technical teams, managers in the C-suite. We'll be presenting at conferences and the creation of a lot of architectural documentation. And the last main element of any architecture role, especially a security architect or a cloud security architect, is sales. We're going to have to sell the architecture to the C-suite and convince the architecture to invest in our security solutions, which obviously means quantifying the risk and showing the uh, C-suite exactly how much risk that organization has and then showing how the mitigation plan costs less than the actual risk itself. Because if we can do that in sales, we can create budget for the needed solution. So you can see the security architect and the cloud security architect positions are very different than many others. We're not configuring routers. We're not configuring ACLs. We're not touching Linux. We're not touching Python. Architecture is about designing the technology strategy. And when people learn architecture, they need to not learn necessarily how to build it, but learn how the underlying technology works, the strengths and weaknesses of the various technologies, and learn how the different technologies fit together to create a cohesive strategy to protect an organization from harm that security architecture. And that takes a collaborative effort. It'll take physical security, network security, identity, application security, and so many other components. And you there as the security architect are the facilitator and the leader of these efforts. If you'd like to be a cloud architect or a cloud security architect or an enterprise architect or an AI architect, not only do we have training programs which teach every skill necessary to do the job, not just the tech skills, but we have a free webinar every week where we'll go over the architect role, talk about the skills that you need to learn, and talk about what it's going to take for you to get hired in your first architecture job. And these are completely free. You can sign up for these free webinars on Zoom. The link is for these webinars is in the description of this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in another video or free webinar. Take care.